Hey, hello everybody, and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Moldy Worm Four Nine Seven Five, and I want to apologise that there has been no videos on the channel recently. I've had quite a lot of personal stuff going on. It has been Christmas as well, and I'm actually making this um, between Christmas and New Year, so there's going to be some New Year's stuff going on. Um, but hopefully, videos will return in the new year. <laughs> But anyway, getting that out of the way, I do want to bring you a video today, and this is a highly requested video, not the kind of videos that I normally make, but I'm going to be showing you how I actually edit all my videos here on the channel. Now, shout out goes to Kyle McClure, um, he is just restarting uploading on his channel, and he is using this program that I have, uh, which is called Shotcut, I will leave a link below if you want to download it for yourself it's a completely free editing software and it is available on windows and mac so if you guys are on apple you can use this as well and i will also link kyle's uh, youtube channel down he makes gaming content like myself a little bit different mainly fortnite overwatch and a little bit of call of duty uh, so if you want to go and see some of that gameplay by all means. But today I'm going to be showing you the basic functions of how I edit my videos. We're going to be editing a short sequence. Um, I will show you some of the tips and techniques that I use. Shortcut is a very simple software to use once you get the hang of it. It does have quite a lot of features. It is almost as good as Adobe Premiere but the fact that it's free that makes it a lot better especially for a lot of you guys who are just starting out on YouTube or you're like Kyle who are restarting their channel and you're looking for a decent editing software um, that is free. But anyway, let's get into it. This is the user interface um, when you load up Shotcut. Um, so in a minute, um, I will go through all of these. What Once we render out the sequence... Um, there is a few different rendering formats you can see on the side here. Um, but then we're going to be starting a new project here. So you can go ahead and name the project, which I'll do in a second. Uh, you can also select where it saves your projects to. So you can see down this right hand side here um, are all the project uh, projects that I've edited recently. Um, so if you are halfway through editing a scene or a sequence and you want to leave it and come back to it later you can do that you can save your shortcut files and come back to them later but when you load up shortcut all your most recent videos or, or sequences will be here uh, so you can you might recognize some of these if you've uh, been around the channel for a while you might recognize some of these uh, on here but let's just go ahead and name the project we're just going to call this uh, test sequence if I can spell test sequence right and it's basically just going to be me messing around showing you guys some of the stuff that I do so let's go ahead click start and there we go we're into shortcut so a few things to note before we start you will have a space down here for your timeline so this is where your timeline will go but there will be no timeline when you start so you need to click on these three little lines down here and it will open up a little menu and you've got a few options in here uh, you can select the track height so if you want them to be fatter or thinner depending on how you like it to be and then these are the ones i don't really use but you've got track operations in here this is the main one you're going to use and you've got add audio track so if you want to add music or a voiceover you can go ahead and add an audio track you can also put video files into an audio track and it will remove the video and it will just keep the audio. So if you want to if you want to use some uh, some sound effects from a game but you don't want the video, you can just drop that in. So I usually go for one audio track just for any bits of voiceover or music. And then you've got video track, which is basically the same. Uh, but it will keep the video and the audio. So if you want video and audio, um, 
then go for a video track. You can also mute your clips. So if you want just the video, you can drag in your video and then you can apply a filter and mute it, which I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And if you want to add another video track, you can. So you can have multiple video tracks. I usually have about six video tracks uh, when I'm editing my videos. Today we'll just go for two and I'll show you how that works, but you can have as many as you want and you can also have multiple uh, audio tracks as well. Now you have this little slider here on the right to scroll up and down. Um, then a few of the tools we've got on here, we've got the cut tool, we've got uh, copy, we've got paste, uh, then you can also um, duplicate a track and obviously the minus is to delete a clip if you don't want that. Then we also have the magnet tool which I'll show you how that works in a minute. So I usually have the magnet turned on which means if you've cut a clip and you're dragging it and you want it to line up perfectly uh, with the previous clip then it will automatically magnetize exactly right but very occasionally you need to drag a clip to where you want it to and you can turn that off simply just by clicking a magnet there and there is also hotkeys for all of these uh, the main hotkey that you use is S which is to split the clip and um, I don't really know any of the hotkeys for the other ones but you can look those up if you want but let's just go ahead and get started in here. So to drag in a clip, you want to open a file and you want to go to wherever your clip is stored. So I have a Moldyworm Gaming file. Um, that is mainly where I get all my video footage from. So we'll go into here and I will just go ahead and find some video footage that we can use. So let's see what we've got in here. We've got some Forza Horizon stuff. Uh, we'll just go with this one. And you can just double click that. And there we go. So we'll just go ahead and pause that for now. Um, when you drag it in though, it will play your clip in here. And then to get it into your timeline, simply click and drag it into either video 2 if you want it on top or video one i'm going to drag it to video one because that is going to be like my background layer so as you work down um the most bottom layer of video will be the background and every layer you add on top of that will go on top of it which makes sense so what we'll do now is um we'll grab a still image so you can add images if you want to. So a lot of you, uh, those of you who follow the channel will know that I usually have a face cam. I've not got one going for this video because I want you guys to see everything that's happening on the screen and I don't want to cover anything up. Um, but normally I have a face cam and I like to have a little border. So I've made this still image here of just a very simple border. And there we go. That is the border so we're just going to go ahead and click and drag that in as well and then if you just scrub along here by clicking and dragging you can see that it's added that border around and on top of this video file so we've got the video file on the bottom and i want this green border that i've made here to just be a nice little border around my video uh around my face cam here on the left. So we're gonna go ahead and apply a filter to resize this. So click on the clip that you want to add the filler to. So I've selected this um, border here and you can see whichever one you click on, it will make it dark. So you know you've selected it. You want to click filters right here and go ahead and hit the plus button. Now you, if you're looking for a certain filter and you know what it's called, you can go ahead and search it in the top. If you're like me and you do a lot of video editing, what you'll want to do is favorite the ones that you use most. So these are all of the uh, filters that I use in pretty much all my videos. I will use all of these at some point. The other ones I don't really use, um, but if I do, you can obviously search it. 
So this is the favorite tab, but you can go to video and you can see there are loads and loads of different filters. You can even go ahead and do a chroma key. You've got a simple one if you're just like me and you want to do a very simple chroma key. Or you can go for a very advanced one. You've got chroma hold. You can blur. Um, there is loads of different things you can do. You can add a grid on. Um, you can add loads of different filters, so if you want it to look like you're looking down the scope of a gun, you can add like crosshairs, or if you want to want it to look like you're looking down a camera, you can have um, you can have like a camera effect. Uh, you can make it look old, so you got like old film grain and dust, or you can go for like scratches and projectors. You can also up and down the opacity, so if you've got a background layer. And then the layer on top, you want it to be a bit more opaque. You can adjust that. There is loads of different video things, and it's the same with the audio. Uh, but the main ones I use are like fading in and out of the audio and then upping the volume. So what we're going to do is go ahead and select this one, the size, position, and rotate. Click that, and you'll see now it's added this little grid around here and this little border. And we can go ahead and drag this around now. We can drag it around the frame. If you know exactly the size that you want or the exact position you want, you can um, you can type it in here and it will move accordingly. They also have a number of preset ones in here. Uh, you can also adjust the zoom. So if you want to zoom in or zoom out, uh, you can do that just by... Um, changing the value in here or just dragging the slider up or down and you can see it will adjust it so we're just going to leave that set at 100 for now and then if you want to make your own presets so you'll see in here there is a bunch of presets already and i have made a couple of presets myself so we've got like the shake one and shake one second unscaled uh, that's if you want like a camera shake <clears throat> um, what you can do is adjust everything you want and hit the plus button and you can see there it says save you can save your preset so if you're making lots of videos with the same um, like border around you can go ahead and just find it on this list down here but then you can also just manually adjust it with the corners up here so we can just drag this down like this and then using this, we can just drag that to the desired place. And now you can see we have a nice border there. So what I'd normally do here is I have my face cam. And I will just add my face cam uh, underneath this uh, border here. And it adds a nice little border around your face cam. Just makes it look a little bit more professional. And then if we go ahead and play this... You can see that will stay there. So now what I hear you saying to me is um, this clip isn't very long. It's not going for the whole length of this bottom clip here. It's going to cut out. And if I continue playing this, you can see the face cam border disappeared there. And we want that through the whole video. So the way that we do that is simply select the clip here and just drag it as long as you want. So my advice is drag it a lot further than you actually need. And then what you can do is go to the part of the video where you want to uh, finish having the face cam border, hit S on your keyboard, and it will split the clip, as you can see right there. And then you can drag this. You've got two parts and you've got your first part. So if we play this, you'll see the border is there. And when you get to the gap, it should disappear. And then once we've passed this gap here, it reappears again. So that is how that works. And if you want to delete one of these, all you've got to do, obviously split it where you want and hit delete on the keyboard, select it and hit delete. And there you go, it has been deleted. 
But then if you want to bring that back, you can obviously drag it out again, or you can hit Control Z and it will bring that back if you delete one by accident. What if we want to add some filters into this? So you want the clip to fade in at the start. So at the start of the video, if we go back to the start, you can see it's instantly there. So the second someone clicks on your video, that's it. You're straight into the video. There's no lead up. There's no nice fade in. It's just very sudden and very kind of uh, brutal is how I'd describe it. It's very sharp, which is not really how you like to start. Well, how I like to start my videos. So what we're going to do is drag these just out a little bit. Just, just a little bit there. So you can see it's not right at the start of the video. And then we're going to select this clip here. We're going to hit the plus, and then you can search it, or it will be in the video section. We're going to look for this one, the fade in video. We're going to hit that. And now, if I play the clip, you will see it will have a nice gentle fade in. So you see that nice gentle fade in there. So if that fade in wasn't long enough for you, what you can do is select the clip that the filter is applied to select the filter up here because you may have multiple different filters on this clip so select the video up here and then you can see the duration here is one second so you can either hit the plus and it will add time or you can go ahead and type it in yourself so we'll go ahead and hit that as two seconds and you can see now that this little fade in triangle down here has got slightly bigger and if we watch it back now you'll see the fade in is much slower so I usually keep my fade ins at one second which is the preset um, that seems to be long enough for me um, but you can adjust it if you want a really slow fade out at the end of a video or something like that but then we get on to um, transitions. So let's move on to transitions. I'm just going to go ahead and delete the face cam border up here. And we're going to go ahead and split this clip. And we're going to say that we have this short little intro here. And then we want to have the actual intro. So if I go ahead and grab my actual intro which you can see here is 80s intro and we drag that into here and this now is my actual intro for my videos so there we go we've got my actual intro and I actually created this intro using shortcut which is what we're editing on right now um, so I might do a video in the future how to create a intro like this let me know if you'd like to see something like that but what we're going to say is this is some kind of little skit or something funny that happens in the video then you want your intro and then you want to go into the main part of the video so we've got a nice fade in at the start now then i want to have this clip fade out and into the intro so what we're going to do is add a fade out video now. And I'm going to leave that at one second. I'm actually going to go ahead and adjust this one back to uh, one second as well. There we go. So we've got one second fade in, one second fade out. So if I play this back now. There we go. And you might notice down here that I have left a small gap. So what I was telling you earlier about the magnet tool here, if you have the magnet tool turned on and you drag a clip like this up to another clip, you can see it basically like magnetizes onto the other clip. If I drag it to this clip, it does the same. 
it butts right up to the next clip. But if you turn this off, if you turn the magnet off, you can drag this to exactly where you want it. So normally, if you get within this sort of range of a clip, it would just magnetize to it. But if you want a small gap like this, for whatever reason, you can turn off this little magnet tool here, and then you will get this clip. But if you turn the magnet back on like this, it doesn't just suddenly magnetize, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you drag the clip, it will then magnetize. So what I'm going to do is turn off the magnet. I'm going to drag this out a little bit. I'm going to leave a small gap because this fades to darkness and then it brings my intro up. And you don't want this to be too sudden because if it's fading out and then straight into your intro, it can look a little bit um, quick, a little bit rushed. But if you have this very small sort of pause of blackness in there, it just gives that sort of feeling of quality. It's a very small thing. It might not sound like a lot, but trust me, it looks a little bit better. So we're going to leave a small gap at the start. So there'll be a one second of blackness when the video starts, and then it will fade into your video. It will fade out. There'll be a moment of blackness. Then there'll be the intro. Now the intro already has these fade in and fade out when I created it, so I don't need to apply them to this. But then we go into the main bit of clip here. We're going to go ahead and hit uh, select the clip, select filters. We're going to go to fade in. We've got this fade in again here. Again, if you want to adjust it, you can add it here or type it in. But we're going to do exactly the same on this side. We're going to drag this and just leave a very small gap here. So now, if I play this back, we'll start from the beginning, it should look pretty good. And there we go. So the audio is not great on this because we're pretending that this would be the be narration on this. We're pretending that this would be me talking and the start of the video. Obviously, it's not. It's just a little bit of video footage. But this is how I set up my intros. I usually have, if something funny happens in the middle of the video, I will put that here as kind of a coming up soon bit before the intro and then I will launch into my main introduction to the actual video. But now what we're going to do is go ahead and grab a still image. So I'm just going to grab my logo here and this logo doesn't have any kind of background. It's a PNG. It's just this round logo here. I'm going to drag that over the top of my clip here so you can see now it's green screen this bit off I'm going to go ahead and hit the magnet tool as well just turn that back on and what I want this to do is fade in but I don't want it to fade in through blackness so if we go ahead and hit the fade in video on this picture here I want this to fade in and then fade back out again so this could be if you're pr promoting one of your social media uh, social media channels, you want to just put a picture up of your Facebook page or something as you're talking about it and then have it fade off when you've finished. We're imagining it's something like that. So if we hit the fade in video, just like we did with this one here, if I now play this, it will fade in through blackness. So you can see what it does here is it applies the round, it will apply a round black circle here and then the video will fade in. So if I play it again, you can see that there is a black circle appears very abruptly on the screen and then the logo fades in. 
Now, what I want is the logo to just fade in. I don't want that black circle there at the start. So what you need to do is apply the filter as you normally would, but then you need to tick this little box here and it says adjust opacity instead of fade with black. And if I play it now, you can see there it adjusts the opacity. So basically the image is already on the screen, but it's completely opaque so you can't see it. And the system will automatically reduce the opacity so it appears that the logo is fading in. So you don't really need to know all that. That's basically just how it works if you are interested. Um, but if you want it to fade in through black, like we did here, then you will leave you will leave this unchecked. So you can see it's unchecked. If we go to this one where you want the fade in to be opaque, then you need to just hit this little box here. Okay, so next we're going to move on to transitions. I'm going to show you how to make uh, an actual sort of transition between two scenes in a video. So if we're imagining this is our first scene here, um, I'm going to drag in another clip. Um, let's see here. We'll go back to my video folder and we'll just grab any other kind of clip. Uh, we'll grab one of these GTA modifying videos. And if I turn this on, we connect those up. If I play this now, you can see the transition there is very sudden. One minute we're in Forza and it immediately goes to GTA. It's a little bit too sudden of a change. The viewer is not really going to understand what is happening if you have a transition that quick. So what you want to do is have some kind of wipe or a fade or a bevel or something like that to give the viewer an idea that this is a transition. You're transitioning to another part of the video. Uh, it might be something later in the gameplay. You might be going to a different game like that is what I'm doing in this part. It could be anything but you want to add some kind of transition. So you want to grab the second part of your clip here and drag it over the top of the other one. So you can drag it this way, you can drag it over the top of the other one as well. Now you want to just drag it over a little bit. Sorry, just a little bit like that. And you can see that it will create this purple and blue little small part of video and you can actually drag this out you can move this around uh, but for this uh, example we're obviously going to leave it in place because this is where we want the transition to be now if you want to edit this transition before we do i will show you what it looks like so if we play the video you can see it has a very nice crossfade there just into the second video and that is already a lot better but what I want to create is a sharp wipe. So we select the transition down here. We then go to video in the top here. We then click down on this little drop down menu and you can see that in here we've got loads of different um, We've got loads of different transitions. So we've got dissolve is the standard one. We've got cut, horizontal barn. We've got barn doors. Uh, we've got barn V up. We've got iris circle. There is loads of different ones. If there isn't one here that you like, you can also make your own at the bottom. You can make your custom one. We're going to go with the bar horizontal. That's what I like to use. And we're going to adjust the softness here. But before I do, I'll show you what it looks like. So if we go back to here and I hit play, you can see it's a very fast transition. So the more you overlap a video, so if I cut it here and I drag it this much, you get a very large transition. 
and the larger your transition is, so here we are in the slower continue, that dissolve say... is going to be. Now it's not very obvious in that clip there um, because not a lot happens. Um, but the larger it is, the slower your transition will be. So you want it to be quite small. So we've done that. You can see, if I go halfway through, you can see the wipe here. So this is the GTA clip here. And this is the original clip here. And you can see it's got this very um, soft edge, is how I'd describe it. Now, if I adjust this bar here, you will slowly see that that softness will go away. If you drag it right down to 0%, you will have a very clear cut wiped line here. So if you don't want it to be an obvious transition, you can go for something like a crossfade or a dissolve. If you want it to be a little bit more um, apparent, you can go for like a horizontal bar and you can just up the softness so you don't apparently know it. But if you want it to be very obvious, you can have a wipe like this. And if I play this now, you will you will see it a lot more clearly. So there we go. I'll play it again. It's quite fast. There we go. So you've got a very hard line here now where that transition is. And that is a very nice transition. You can add like a swoosh noise. That's normally what I have. Uh, makes it look a little bit more professional. And there we go. We're straight into the second part of the clip there. Now, another one of the hotkeys I'm just going to tell you about very quickly is um, the space bar. So if you hit space bar, it will play. And if you hit space bar again, it will pause. So instead of clicking on here, you can just hit space bar. It's very quick. Obviously, S is to cut a clip. And you've got those tools down here as well. Now, there isn't really a whole lot more that I'm going to show you in this video. They're some of the main things that I use. Um, so we've got the fade in and fade out. Uh, we've got adding multiple tracks and you add things on top of a background. And then we've got transitions like this as well. Uh, they're the main sort of things that I use. Now, I haven't really got too much into the audio side of this. I have got an audio track down here. And I will show you very quickly. These are quite clearly, um, obviously, video files here. And as I mentioned at the start, if I play this video, you can see there is audio with that. But if you want the audio from this clip, say it's a music video and you have downloaded the video, but you only want the music, you don't want the video, you can drag a video clip like this into the audio track and you will see that the video disappears. So this is a video track here. You can quite clearly see it keeps the video and then it has this line which is the gain line and you have your audio underneath it. With the audio tracks you don't have the video, you just have the audio and you have the gain line at the top. So now you will have the audio from this one and the audio from the other clip. But imagine you want the audio, say this is the game audio and this is you talking but one is overpowering the other, what you can do is select whichever one is overpowering. So if we say that the bottom clip is your voice and it is too loud, select it, go to filters, hit the plus button, and you want to search this time in the audio section, uh, but I have it favorited, it is gain and volume, click on this, and what you can do is drag this little blue slider so obviously if you go minus, that will make it quieter. So gain, for those who don't know, is basically your volume level. So if you go into minus, this is this stands for decibels here. 
this is minus 55 decibels this will now be very very quiet you probably won't even be able to hear it to be honest um, but then obviously you can drag it up as well and you can see on this side here your little peak meter the higher you drag this it will move your peak meter so you usually want it around the green just going into the yellow here you don't want it to be way up here in the reds because uh, then you're going to have horrible horrible noises and people complain that your video is very poor audio quality so you want it usually you don't really want to fiddle around with this it's only if one is being overpowered you can maybe drag it i would not go more than plus or minus 10 decibels if you minus it by 10 it will go down quite a lot and if it's a little bit quiet you can drag it up to plus 10 you can see that is just about right there i've gone up to 12 but uh, but if you don't adjust it, then it's just going to be sat at zero. That is the normal level. So that is pretty much it. That is all I'm really going to show you in this video. Once you've got your final um, sequence finished down here, you're happy with everything. My advice is just play your clip, watch it through, make sure you're 100% happy with it before you render it because rendering can take quite a long time depending on how long your video is if you've made an hour long video it can take around 45 minutes to render so my advice is watch it through if you're happy with it then go ahead and render if there's something you need to tweak then tweak it before you render it because it's very annoying watching something that you've just spent an hour rendering and then having to go back and edit something and then render it again just before we end the video, I'm going to show you how you actually render a sequence. Um, but once you're happy, hit export up here with the little CD icon. And then it will bring up loads of different um, rendering formats. So you might recognize some of these. You've got WebM. Um, you might recognize some of these. You've got like H264. Um, if you're into uh, video um, and editing like myself, then you will recognize some of these. But WebM is quite a um, popular one. You've also got WAV. Uh, you've got MP3. Bear in mind that these are all audio ones. So if you have visual stuff like I have here and you render it as an audio file, you will not have the visuals. It will only have the audio so bear that in mind um, we've also got camcorders so we've got a lot of like HD files and DVDs uh, if you're creating something to go onto a DVD so it might be like someone's wedding and you want to just edit it a little bit and you're going to put that on the DVD for someone then you can select which DVD you've got widescreen you've got Sony PSP as well um, you've got a bunch of intermediate files here and then going down we've also got stills so we've got TIFF, PNG, JPEG these are all probably ones you recognize but for most of you watching this um, you're going to be uh, creating these videos for YouTube and Shotcut has that sorted for you if you go to the top there is an option right here for YouTube so I, you can create your own render format as well if you're not happy with any of these. Um, there's a lot to choose from, so you should be. Um, but you can just hit YouTube and then just go ahead, hit export file. And then it will ask you where you want to save it to and what you want to name it as. Then click save and you'll see on this side here, you'll have this render sequence. And you can watch how long it will take. It's up to 3% here. And you can see it's going to take 4 minutes and 48 seconds. And you can probably hear my PC now booting up. Because rendering takes quite a lot of energy. I have a very good PC so this doesn't take very long. Those who don't have a very powerful PC this will take quite a lot longer. Um, but I used to render on a very crappy laptop. 
and it still worked absolutely fine so you shouldn't have a problem uh, but that's going to do it for this video let me know if this was useful for some of you if it was a little bit long then i do apologize but i wanted to get the information out there for you and i wanted to show you it in a slow manner because a lot of the videos i've seen have been quite fast paced and difficult to follow so hopefully this was quite easy to follow and it will help some of you out who are just starting on youtube and hopefully kyle if you've made it this far in the video it's helped you out as well but thanks all so much for watching and i will see you in the next one